Miami. Or as I like to call it, Shangri-La. Where old people come to retire and young people come to stay young. It's one of America's most vital cities. I've always wondered what it would be like to get a place down here. Maybe a swanky pad like this one. It's got all the amenities. Custom gourmet kitchen. The soaking tub. And of course, unobstructed views of the water. And this is the guy who would sell it to me. So, uh, gorgeous uh, property. Very nice home. This is it, this is the life. Yeah, we're on the Venetian Islands right now. Basically, it separates Miami Beach from downtown Miami. Unbelievable. And this is like the most this desired neighborhood-ish, right? Exactly. And in fact, our property values going up? Values are going up like crazy. I mean, it's amazing what you see five years ago today. The increases in prices are incredible. Yeah. Miami is beautiful. You have the weather. It's really like the place to be. Do people ever talk about climate change and the rising sea levels? Is that, is that a concern of any of your clients? For my clients and other friends in the industry, it's not really a concern. Because it's paradise, it's tropical, it's gorgeous, and yet it is, according to the scientists, one of the most vulnerable to climate change. Sea rises a couple of feet, this whole thing gets, but no one, it's just like, yeah, nah, whatevs. When I was a kid, sea level rise wasn't even a thing. Back then, oceans were scary because of pirates, sharks, and violent storms. Who wouldn't want to live here in Miami? It's beautiful. But is sea level rise something people here actually have to worry about? To find out, I've arranged to meet with a scientist named Karen Bolter. She lives in South Florida and says she'll give me the lowdown. Today, she's introducing me to two of the top climate scientists in Florida, Ben Kurtman and Harold Wanless. So what are we looking at here? So here we go. This is what it looks like in 2030. Everything in red wow. is going to be underwater. In Whoa. 15, years, 15 years, during the extreme tide in October, every high tide is going to be this high. That's just 15 years from now. Now let's look at 2060. High tide in October, areas that will be below sea level. It's uninhabitable. I can't believe what I'm looking at. Whole parts of Miami, gone? I had no idea it could be this bad, and so soon. And you know, a hurricane in October is absolutely not unheard of, that happens mm. here. So now you have sea level rise and storm surge. Think about how much flooding they're gonna suffer during a, a major event. If a storm surge hit in 2060, this is what's vulnerable, once the sea level is that high. Oh and my you're God. looking at less than 50 years in the future. I was in a movie called Water World, and it got really bad reviews. <laughs> but now we can see that we were right. <laughs> can you show me on the map what the worst case scenario is for, say, 2100? The high projections for 2100 are 6.6 .6 feet. When the tide is highest, everything in red will be underwater. Whoa. Yeah. The entire county. There's no safe place. There's no more Miami. The port facilities compromised. The airport's compromised. No fresh yeah. water resources. Also, you know, just because there's places that are above water, if there's no roads going to the place, it's essentially cut off from exactly. civilization. And that's what we're telling communities to plan for. We're not just looking at South Florida. This is a proxy for all the coastal areas of the world, the Mumbai's, the Shanghai's, the yeah. Atlantic cities. There's gonna be like massive migrations of humanity moving to different parts of the world just to survive, right? I mean, we're talking well, about... It's gonna happen in the coming centuries because all of this carbon that we put into the atmosphere, it hasn't even started to make its impact, but there's such a time lag. The big urgency is that every year we don't do anything, we're warming the ocean more, and it's that heat that's accelerating melting of ice. And that's the scary part. We need to start thinking about how we build and plan, not for the next five years, but for the next hundred years. I really had no idea that all the carbon dioxide we've emitted will continue to do damage for decades. 
raising the seas all around the world. What are the millions of people who live on the coast supposed to do? As I ponder Miami's future, I can't help but notice how normal everyone's acting. Don't these people realize the city's on the verge of a major crisis? Already streets are flooding during some high tides. Salt water bubbling up from drains and making things miserable. But it seems that sea level rise isn't a priority for some of Florida's top politicians, like second term Governor Rick Scott. Officials in Florida's Department of Environmental Protection were banned from using the words climate change in official reports and communications. Scott's office denied there was a policy, but state workers seem to be dancing around the terms at a hearing. Future versions of our mitigation plan will be required to have uh, language discussing that issue. What issue is that? Uh, the issue that you mentioned earlier regarding. Uh, <laughs> so, are there any politicians here who are taking things seriously? Turns out there's one right here in Miami Beach, Mayor Philip Levine. We're all fighting against sea level rise. We believe that if we organize together, hopefully our voice will be that much louder. If there's a politician who can help save Miami, I gotta meet him. Mayor Levine, good to meet you. Welcome to Miami Beach. So, Mayor, what kind of things are you doing to prepare for what's, you know, what's coming and what's happening? You know, basically, the sea level goes up, uh, the bay goes up, uh, and the water comes out of our drains onto our streets. So what we did right away is we immediately started putting in massive pumps under the ground to push the water back out to where it came. And we also began raising the roads. So for example, the area you're in right now, you see how low we are. We've actually raised the street higher. Two years ago, that's what this is. Exactly. But what about down here? What about this? When it floods, this is not higher. There are drains around us where the water will go into so we're right. lower, there's drains here, that's a higher street. This yeah. will not flood. We believe it's a good 40, 50 year solution. You we're not, we're not raising is, them for today. This is for 50 years. This is today. a 50 year solution. Absolutely. But the forecast for Miami seemed to be pretty grim. I mean, they're talking about, you know, the end of the century, most of Miami being underwater. Well, I don't necessarily agree with those forecasts. I believe in climate change and I believe it's human made. Uh, and I believe that the seas are rising. Yeah. I'm not sure I believe in the very aggressive forecast put out there. Okay, but at this current pace of sea level rise, right. Miami will be submerged unless something drastic yes. is done? I, I'm optimistic. I, I believe we can get it done. You know, one of our biggest obstacles, Jack, is that we have a state with a governor and a cabinet that doesn't believe in sea level rise, and they've turned a blind eye. Right. And they just say, you know what, we don't believe it, we don't think so, we don't see a sense of urgency and we're trying to convince the governor, forget about politics and just understand that your streets are flooding, that you have coastal cities that need help. Mayor Levine may only be planning a few decades out, but at least he's trying. What about that governor, Rick Scott? Hi, this is Jack Black calling for Governor Scott. My Hollywood cred doesn't get me through. Thank you, I appreciate it. And the best I can do is leave my number. Okay. Mission not accomplished. Would it really be possible to raise up the entire city of Miami to save it from big storms and sea level rise the way Mayor Levine wants to on Miami Beach? I decide to talk to another mayor, Phil Stoddard of South Miami, to get his take. Mr. Mayor, I just came from a lunch with Mayor Levine, and uh, his solution seems to be, we'll just lift the city up. I'm gonna lift up the streets. His plan will work for a while, and it'll work on Miami Beach, because Miami Beach has a very high income level per square mile. If you go out to West Miami-Dade County, the land does not generate enough income to do the kinds of projects that Levine is talking about in Miami Beach. There's just not enough money there. But is it even a realistic goal to say, let's lift the whole city up three feet? It seems insane to me. We don't have that much rock. Right. So if you elevate the roads, then 
your driveway is sort of going whoop like this, so you've got to elevate your driveways, then you've got to elevate your sidewalks, then you might want to put some dirt in between them so people don't fall off. And then there's the fact that your house is down in a hole, so you've got to start elevating the houses. And the schools. A couple trillion dollars later. And the hospitals and everything. I don't think we can afford it. What about further projections? What do you see Miami looking like in 100 years? Water world. Water world? Yeah. It's funny you mention that. I actually had a small role. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have recognized me. I was covered in grease, but uh, I still think we were on to something there. Yeah, well, I, loved, I loved that great sailboat. Yeah. Sorry to get off topic. What about sea walls, the solution of sea walls? Is that a problem for Miami is that we sit on top of a bed of porous limestone. And you know what's going to kill us? The shrimp. There's these prehistoric shrimp that dug in the sediments and made holes underneath wow. us. The whole city is built on a foundation of Swiss cheese, basically? Yeah, a rocky version of Swiss cheese. You want to see a piece of it? Uh, yeah. I got some out you here in the yard. Yeah, yeah, I got some of it. So, Jack, this is the reason we can't keep the water out. This is Miami Formation limestone, and the wow. water goes right through it. So this is the foundation that Miami is built on? You can build on it, but if you build a wall up on top of that to keep the water out, the water goes right through the holes, right. comes around underneath you. So Mayor Levine says, don't listen to the doomsayers. Miami's here to stay. What do you think? This place is going to be underwater. We have enough heat in the atmosphere right now, enough heat in the oceans, enough carbon dioxide. Eventually, Miami will be underwater. It's just a matter of when? You got it. The sea level is going to rise, and Miami won't be here when it rises. I can't stop thinking of all the neighborhoods away from the glamour of Miami Beach on the mainland that are going to be impacted by the rising oceans coming up through the porous limestone. Of the nearly three million people who live in the Miami area, more than half are lower income or immigrant. What are they going to do? I arrange a meeting with Nicole Hernandez Hammer, a scientist who left academia to work as a climate activist here. So great to meet you. What a gorgeous summer day in the middle of December. Yeah, <laughs> is yeah we this still natural? got a little bit of flooding. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, what, now what, what's happening here? Is, it, is this water? This is high tide. This is just high tide? Yeah, and this, this is not... actually a foot less than last month. Crazy, because yeah. I thought that maybe this was like leftover from rain. No, this no. is today, wow. and no rain. It's really tough, because I think sometimes people see the flooding and they think maybe a water main broke or it's just bad infrastructure. They're not making the connection between the climate change and what's happening here. Just to be clear, we're pretty far away from the beach right now. We were on the mainland now. Miles away from the beach, and yet water comes all the way here through the, the floor, basically. Through the limestone, yeah. And it carries with it whatever is sitting on the surface and slightly underground, like septic tanks Yikes. or auto shops and whatever they've got coming out of their place, yeah. and it collects. It's like biohazard you know. stuff. Yeah. It can be toxic. It's got all sorts of bacteria, and people don't know about it. So they're walking around in the water. Their kids are splashing in the water. It's a public health concern. Damn. And we're talking about people that have lived here their whole lives, and it's probably tough for them to wrap their head around that, right? I think there's a certain degree of denial. Yeah. I think people feel like, you know, the elected officials or state agencies are going to figure it out. It can't possibly be that Miami's going to be underwater. Is and the so, governor hearing your voice? Is, is there a movement in the, in the... He heard it, but he's pretending he didn't hear it. Right. <laughs> a group of my colleagues had a meeting with him, and he listened, and then they left, and then that was it. And nothing changed. Yeah. So you can see the writing on the wall. What do you tell people in the community? Essentially, it's telling people that what we have here is going away right. and they could lose everything. But I'd like to introduce you to some people that I talked to. How's it going? Hey, how's it going? Hello. Jason, how are you nice doing? Nice to meet you. Good, good, good. So Nicole is telling me that sometimes the septic tanks can mix with the, the groundwater and, and it can be like dangerous water. Has that ever been a problem? We're like two blocks down and it gets really bad. It gets flooded really bad and it sticks. Yeah. I don't know if that's like gases or something. Right. right? And then it, it just smells really like bad. Tell the kids, don't go splashing in that water. No. 
do you guys get worried because like the level of the ocean is just gonna keep on rising and it's only like probably one foot away from actually water coming into your house. Are people concerned about Miami and like the future? Yeah, I mean, it's gonna devalue the home eventually. People are gonna come by and see it and there's no interest in buying a property like that. Is this really our future? One where eventually millions of Americans will have to move away from the coast? If that happens, where are they all gonna go? Who's gonna decide where they go? And who is going to pay for it all? Hello? Hi. Yes, it's Jack Black calling again. I uh, just wanted to talk to Governor Scott. I decided uh, to call well, Governor Rick Scott one Secretary more time. Uh, you know, the one who apparently Jack won't Schultz. listen to his mayors Jack or his scientists. It's uh, regarding climate change. Okay, but what if what if we what if I say I don't I wanted I just want to talk about like weather difference. Does that make a difference? Cuz I know. Again, I don't get through. All right. He knows where to find me if he wants to call me. Uh, but I'm not gonna hold my breath. So thank you. This is insane to me. Miami's going under, but so many people are acting like nothing's wrong. Everywhere I go, I see construction cranes and new buildings going up. With sea levels rising, surely the developers in Miami are aware of the risk. Or they think it maybe people can just swim to the kitchen for breakfast. Hey, Jack. I ask an architect, Ronaldo Borges, and an insurance expert, Alex Kaplan, to meet. The insurance mogul? Something like that. Architect extraordinaire? Yes, sir. Great to meet you. I'm Jack Black, actor supreme. Let's have a seat, please. So currently, how many new buildings are being built in Miami. Right now, we have over 300 permits for significant high-rise, mid-rise construction. There's no slowing down in sight. Right now, we have over $20 billion of, of new buildings going up. Unbelievable. That none of them really have been thought through in terms of permanent flooding. So no one seems to be panicked about, hey, Miami's gonna be one of the most severely hit places with regard to climate change. No, building increases. The builder, the city builders are sort of saying, okay, we're experiencing construction here that is unprecedented with a lot of cash coming to Miami. Everybody's happy and it's fantastic. Okay, now I get it. Real estate developers aren't concerned about the future. They're cashing in today while the getting's good. You know, in Florida alone, you've got $544 billion worth of property that lives within six feet of the high tide line. You know, it's right on the front line for sea level rise. Alex's company, Swiss Re, is an international insurance giant. They insure the insurance companies. Alex understands risk. Yeah. The problem is, overwhelmingly, people, individuals, uh, corporations, and governments underestimate what they're exposed to. I think the expectation is that, well, the government will come in and solve our problem, so why should I deal with it today? Mm. But flood insurance in the U.S., doesn't cover these things. Sea level rise over time, that's on the owner of the building. Nobody yeah. else is paying for that. At what point do you think people go, wait a second, it's not worth it anymore? These residential buildings get transferred from the developer into an association. If at a certain point the insurance company tells the association, we cannot insure your building because of the risk assessment, suddenly now they have a building that doesn't have insurance. You know, it's really scary to think that South Florida will not be insurable. So many people own homes. They have 30-year mortgages on them. Mm. I, you know, and thinking about how a lot of these, these towers are, are financed, right? It's entirely unsustainable. I get that no one wants this party to end. But when the insurance companies decide the risk is too high and the banks stop giving mortgages, this whole house of cards is gonna collapse, right? I can't help wondering what'll happen to everyone who lives here when all this property isn't worth anything. The more I learn about Miami's fate, the less I'm able to wrap my head around it. Are we gonna have to someday rename it the Lost City of Miami? 
It's only a matter of time before a major storm hits. But it's been a decade, and they've been lucky. So maybe that's part of the denial here. It's all making me feel a little... crazy. I'm imagining that if I lived here in Miami, what would I do? What do you think you'd do? What we know is coming is sea level rise. Three feet, six feet, 12 feet. What is it that, that keeps me from really believing or wrapping my head around these facts? Here's your premise that's wrong. You are thinking that our brains are only rational and they're not. Our brains are wired in part to deny unpleasant emotions. There is a part of our brain which is highly rational, analyzes data, takes in information, and then there's the emotional part of the brain. And the emotional part of the brain is extremely powerful. And it feels more comfortable just to, just to shut down the scientific part of my brain and just enjoy the right now just do nothing. You are not alone. I have dubbed the condition pre-traumatic stress disorder. I am hearing what the scientists are saying in my mind, playing it like a tape all the time. I do. Now, was there a specific incident that heightened the sense of vulnerability and connected it with climate? <sighs> I remember my parents fighting when I was a little boy and I was so scared of their anger towards each other, I ran into a room with my nanny. Okay, that has nothing to do with climate change. Oh, but... That's just what came up. I don't yeah. know why, but that sense well, of, we'll try to, try of to think. fear and danger and, yes. and instability. Right. It's just so unfathomable, the idea of change. So there's the tension. It's in that space, while you're trying to find uh, a peaceful resolution, you just kind of don't do anything. Do you think those are coconuts up there? What do you think they are? It's time for me to leave Miami. But before I go, scientist Karen Bolter thought I really should meet one other person someone who might hold a key to the future. 17-year-old Delaney Reynolds. Delaney, nice to meet you. I'm Jack. Is it true? I've heard that you are an incredible new force in the fight against climate change. Definitely, yes. I go around and I educate as many people as possible, but my main focus is kids, because it's our generation that is going to inherit this problem. Like, all the kids that I talk to, they're like, yes, this is a problem and we need to fix it. And they get so engaged and they're like, I want help. How can I help? What can we do? That's it's, so encouraging. Yeah, it's really cool. So it seems like that's the trend with the youth movement. Yeah. More and more people accepting kids get what's it. happening. Unlike so many adults in leadership positions, our governor has denied that climate change is real and our senator denies that climate change is at all related to humans that we have not caused this mm. and these are educated people i like to say that i live in a state of denial mm. but not me personally the entire state of florida <laughs> <laughs> wow i mean it's a world problem right it's not just a miami problem no. miami is number one in terms of vulnerability so what we see here is going to get the whole world to wake up for the survival of the species of human beings or right? will we become water world exactly where it's just me and kevin costner <laughs> <laughs> on a little boat <laughs> <laughs> well he was kind of like an aquaman he didn't need a boat anyway it's an amazing movie if you get a chance uh, thank you so much for this. This is really the highlight of my journey. Yes. Finally, I found some, some hope. <laughs> but um, it's been amazing talking to you. Do you have any events coming up? Yes, actually. Part of a program called Breakthrough Miami. I'm going to give a talk to about 100 kids. I'm Delaney, and I'm going to talk to you guys about my passion, which is global warming and sea level rise. The good news is there are things that we can do. Instead of using fossil fuels, we have technology like wind power and hydropower and electric cars and solar power. We just need to use it. So maybe Delaney and her generation will help us get out of this mess. If we work together, we can do this. I hope so. But they can't do it alone. What do we want? What do we want? 
They need people like Karen and Nicole Hernandez Hammer and the rest of us. We are unstoppable! Our number one is possible!